give God all the glory. Now, how well do you love? How well do you love? To, to bring more clarity to your life. Whoever you see, every day, it's where the Holy Spirit is anointing you to invest your kindness. Your patience. Your greatest abilities. Is in the location. The direction. Of who God pits around you every day. Jesus was going to do miracles, but the, but the Father sent him to 12 for him to invest the most of himself in. It was 12 where he was going to invest the most of himself in, the most of his personality, the most of his wisdom. And then it goes from 12 to 3. Because the three now represents that there's no limit to him investing himself. Think about this. It was 12 where he was going to invest himself, but it was three where there was no limit to his investment. There was three where nothing was going to stop the investment deposit flow stream. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. Now, I want to say something. Wow, I never saw this a day in my life. Let's go to verse 39. But Jesus answered and said unto them. Oh, let's go to verse 38. Wow. Then certain of the scribes, certain scribes, of the Pharisees answered Jesus and said to him, Master, they called him Master, we would see a sign from thee. Wow. They told Jesus, we'll see a sign from you. Go ahead, show us a sign. Look what Jesus said in verse 39. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And then he said, there shall be no sign given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Wait, wait. So, so we find out that um, Jonah didn't just have an assignment, but he was actually a sign. No, no, no. If, if, if we dig deep in the text, we find out here. That he wasn't just carrying an assignment to go to Nineveh, but he was a sign. Now, now watch this. He was not only a, a sign for, for Nineveh, but he was a sign to these Pharisees that came after the time of Nineveh.
I want to say this to you, that do you know that your deeds of righteousness is going to testify to people after you have done it in the future? Somebody going to receive the testimony of your life and it's going to be an impartation of godliness for them. It can be three weeks from now, three years from now, two months from now, two years from now. But Jonah is now being spoken by Jesus that he was assigned to these scribes that's asking Jesus in this day. Now, Jonah had long and, and, and departed long time ago. But Jesus saying his life is assigned to you right now. And, and that's the sign and the wonder that I'm going to give you. That's the revival. That's the move of God. His life. Now, look, let's go here. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly. So shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now we find out something from Jesus that the earth has a heart. So when God was telling Adam to keep and tend the garden, he was actually telling Adam to guard the heart of the garden with all diligence. Because out of it flows the issues. What man? What? So when he was telling him to keep and tend the garden, it, God was showing Adam how to guard the heart of the garden with all diligence. And out of the heart of the garden was going to flow the issues of life. We know that because the first thing God touches when Adam sinned is he said, curse is the ground. The ground represent the earth. And so now the earth was going to bring forth death. So the earth was carrying the issues of life as well. Now, why do you think Proverbs talks about guarding your heart now? Because... Once you learn how to guard your heart, you operate in sonship. And remember, the earth is crying out from the, for the manifestation of the sons. So you manifest son when your heart is guarded. So watch this. The earth know that until your heart is guarded, you can't guard its heart. And bring its heart out of the darkness. Bring its heart out of. Now, now say is this some deep stuff here if you think about it. I'm talking to you about the heart of the earth real quick. The earth has a heart. So every time Adam was sowing. In Genesis, in the Bible, he was sowing into the earth's heart. So, the, because the seed is full of honor, he was planting honor in the earth. So the earth had to invest back into him what he sowed into it. So if he sowed grape seed, the earth had to give him back grapes in abundance. Because the earth was responding to what he sowed into it. So if he sowed watermelon seed, the earth had to bring him back watermelons in abundance. So, saints, I want you to realize this as well. That the earth is responding. The earth's heart is responding to where your heart is with God. Listen to what I'm saying. You're not going to catch that if you just quickly listening. The earth heart 
is responding to where your heart is with God. So if your heart is in depression, so is the earth. It can only bring forth depression into your atmosphere. If your heart is in the word, so is the earth. Its heart is going to bring forth out of the abundance of the heart. The earth heart going to bring forth what's in your heart with God. So saints, hereby you understand how Jesus was able to multiply five loaves, two fish, how he was able to do the miracle because the earth's heart had to respond to King Jesus's heart. And watch this. His heart was in the glory. His heart was in the factory system of heaven. Wow. So because his heart was in the glory, the earth's heart had to bring forth glory manifestations. So, so watch this. Jesus said, if you have faith, in your heart. You shall say to the mountain. Now the mountain is a part of the earth. So Jesus is saying. If you say to the mountain. Because of what's in your heart. The heart of the earth. Which is also. In alignment with this mountain. Will have to agree. With, with, with your authority. Your faith. Your dominion. Your decree, your boldness, because the earth has a heart that submits to where your heart is with God. That's imagine every single day of your life, every moment. Your greatest job is to protect your faith, hope and love. Think about that. Your greatest job in your life is to protect your faith, hope, and love. Your greatest job is to protect your faith, hope, and love. If you want to be a high producer of God's presence, his word, his power, protect your faith. That means that you keep on hearing the word. See, think about that. Protecting my faith means that I keep on pitting myself in position to hear the word and to get excited over the word. Faith hears the word. Love does the word. Hope rejoices over the word. Faith hears the word. Love does the word. And hope Rejoices over the word. I'm going to say this one more time. Faith. It hears the word. Love. It does the word. But hope rejoices over the word. So here we got three functionalities. Hearing, doing, rejoicing. I just gave you the total man. <laughs> this the new man. This is what Jesus said you must be born again. This born again man is a hearer, a doer, and a rejoicer. A celebration system for God. Ha! The, oh my God. Rebecca. So the new man hears. He that hath an ear. That's all Jesus kept telling him. He that hath an ear. Let him hear what the spirit is saying. So hearing means that you're in a position where you only in, 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 in inclined to the spirit. You're not inclined to your flesh. Hearing mean that you only paying attention to the spirit of God. The Holy Ghost is the only one that got the right to speak a word to. 
And, and, and because you're so in tune with the Holy Ghost, you'll know when he's talking to you through your authority figure, through your boss, through your prophet, through the signs on the streets, through the word that you're reading, through your spirit man. Because your spirit man always got solutions and your flesh man always got pollutions. Leproste candele vosia. Le vandele vocone vandele vacala vacaya. Zebrondo stanle de vosia. So, so we seeing that the new creation is a hearer, is a doer. And watch this. I want to say it like this. It's a dancer. Is a dancer. America different nowadays, man. It's different. How many of y'all know you used to get jiggy with Walmart and just going to Walmart at 2 a.m. You see Wendy Williams over, over on the fourth aisle. It's all good because y'all both shopping because you're public figures. You want nobody to see you during the day. Uh-huh. But now you can't darn, darn, the darn, darn. Uh-huh. You can't do it. <laughs> Walmart want to close their self down. Uh, want to close their self down. I got a word for you, Walmart. I got a word. I got a word for you. Uh-huh. I want to say something to you. I got two teams. I don't got two teams. That's what happened if a hillbilly go to Africa. That's how he's going to talk right there. I got two teams. I got two teams. He, he, he not teams no more. The H done got silent. But the T done got violent. That's what happened. Non-violent, non-violent. There was a day... I think there was a time in Texas. Texas, I think they kind of mild with it. Well, it was kind of crazy. I don't know if it was Texas. They beat down a man. They beat him down, but before they beat him down, <laughs> I, saw, I saw Texas was going in, so I, I, I started ministering to some of them. You know, you know, they'd be out there chanting. Say it loud! They're just out there chanting, just... And they just going when they ready. Woof, 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 woof. I'm like, come on, you got halitosis. You can't woof like that. You can't woof like that. You got to keep yours inside. You got to suffocate yours. You can't woof like that. That woof too high, that woof. We, we felt that woof, woof. And then you got a gap when you woof it. Just the woof is come out. There's another woof. And you woof it. You woof. You got to keep your woof to yourself. You can't. You can't woof so high, high and lift it up. Your train filled the temple. There's another train that's supposed to fill the temple. And they was woofing and woof. And it's like they just roaring. And I, and I, would, I would minister to people, right? That was in the height of when, when stuff happened. And then I don't know if it was days later I found out that the person... There was a man, they beat him down. They they gang beat them. They boom, they thug stumped him. Whoosh. They thug stumped him. Once again, when you see somebody lift up their arms and all that is wet right there, that's that's a sign that you need to go on about your business. When you see a brother like that, don't talk about that's your bo ass. Like this not no bo ass. Yeah, bo ass don't get no you know, that's how. It's not hard to decipher, you know. You see all that. <laughs> that means, that means, that means. That means that you, that means that you. Pray from a distance, pray from a distance. You don't pray, pray both, hold hands. You pray from a distance. You do Bible study from a distance. You don't, you don't do read the Bible, right? Face to face, you read the Bible from a distance. That's it. From a distance. Like, it means far away, like from a distance. Like, not close, up close and personal, but you pray from a distance. There's a difference. See? And the man went go guard, because they went go kind of vandalize like the liquor place and find out the brother loved him some liquor. 
So he found himself guarding the liquor place. Like, hey, he ran out with a knife. Hey, get out of here. Hey, he, he ran out with a knife. And he was running with that machete boy like he was in Russia running from the Kentucky Derby. And while he was running like holy moly donut shop, <laughs> somebody came up from the side and buy out. He was lights out. Machete went flying. <laughs> Everybody came out of nowhere. Thug stomping them. Like a DMX video Rough Riders. <laughs> when EVE, how you do that, used to rap. They started thug stomping him. He was on the floor trying to cover himself. They thug stomped him. He was trying to protect his liquor shop. And he took out his knife. It looked like a sword because it was long. <laughs> if it's short, you get different names when it's short than when it's long. Don't think about it. And, <laughs> and they took his sword. They took his sword from him. And there was thugs stomping him. Boom. <laughs> boom. 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 And it was thugs stomping him. And kicking him. And he up there trying to hold himself. It, Holy moly was trying to guard himself. And, and, and saints, just, I thought about it though. He was so loyal to liquor. That he was willing to take out his weapons to protect his liquor. And I, how much more if you become loyal to the oil. You'll take out your sword to protect your oil supply. So when the devil speak to you offense, you'll take out the sword of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And you'll protect your oil supply. The man took out his big old knife because he was attempting to protect what he felt brought him life. And watch this. The word of God talks about how the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's like a double-edged knife. How much more when you realize what brings you life, you'll take out your weapons to stay in peace, stay in submission, stay in love, stay in faithfulness, stay in learning, stay in attentiveness, stay in honor. And then you'll end up living a swanky life. A swanky life. Is 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 is, is better up here. It's better up here. You can go down. You can be up high. But it's better up here. And I want to say this to you. I want to say this to you. Um, you know what? The solution for America. Is not these uh, riots. Is not these... Uh, Groups that's popping up is not these fundraisers that's coming up talking about give to social injustice. Let me tell you something. The people that's telling people to donate into this race stuff and this justice stuff, where you think the money going? You can't go pay Congress to change anything about justice. Where do you think these shirts going? I can't breathe and all these shirts that they're making. Where do you think the money going? You think it's going to change the law? These people capitalizing off of murders and stuff that happened. And all in the name of black justice. God gave me a word. Said I'm not in it. 
tell your people in JHM, don't invest your money in any black organization, any black uh, pushing justice organization. I'm not in it. So some of you all, I'm saying it now. You can't, you, 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 you don't want to mess up the harvest that God has for your life. Because when you donate where he don't want you to donate and you sow into who he don't want you to sow into, you take on the same stagnation that they have. Black people have not gotten any solutions. And here's what the Lord told me. The solution is not riots, is not protests, and it's not these organizations that's rising up for black justice. He said, in my word, I said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. That's the solution. So all these people that's popping up, you don't get involved in that stuff. Because that's not our assignment. I'm going to tell you like that right now. I'm so glad that I'm not no black figure that been set up by the world. Because look at all these black figures. They got to, if they don't say something about the death that's going on. And they don't talk about racial injustice. All their followers talking about why they don't say something. I'm so glad that the world didn't give me my position. Because, because. I don't have to be manipulated to talk about slavery and all that type of stuff. And, and saints, you think about it. How are you as a child of God and you talking about slavery that happened 1920 and, and 18 and the lynching? How are you talking about that? You supposed to live by the word of God where the word of God said, forgive those that you have ought against. And you still talking about stuff that you didn't even see happen. You didn't even see it happen. All you heard was somebody tell you this and this happened. You didn't, you wasn't there. You ain't see no lynching go. You didn't see, you don't know what happened. You know, I heard somebody say that insanity is when you do the same thing over and over again and you expect different results. I want to ask you a question. How come black people been doing the same thing over and over again? And they themselves say that ain't nothing changed. So why are you doing the same thing over and over again? If, Mar if you say Martin Luther King went on riots, uh, went on protests, and, and you say after the Rodney King, they went on protests and rioting. And, okay, if, 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 if it didn't bring no change, why are you doing it again? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Somebody need to make that a ringtone. Dun, 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 dun. Come on, dun, 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 dun. Pick up the key. Dun, 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 dun. Pick up the key. Dun, 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 dun. You need to pick up the key. Dun, 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 dun. Pick up the key, man. How many of y'all know when it's summertime and your alarm go off and you ain't got to go nowhere and you, you forget to turn your alarm off? You'll be able to. Just slobbing and mobbing. Like save the slob. Save the slob. It'll be used. Save it. Save it. Let God use you. Losing, losing. You're losing slob unnecessarily. Losing slob unnecessarily. So, you do the same thing. You're doing the same thing and no results. Okay? Saints, I, I, I want to also say this. Um, the Spirit of the Lord told me that what Satan does is Satan uses a certain part in a, in a decade to invade media with racism. 
I don't know if you all remember in the last presidency of that that other person. I don't even want to call his name on my school. The other guy. In his presidency, remember there was somebody getting shot by the police. Stuff started happening, right? And there was this whole push. And like they was doing the same protest in Louisiana. Remember that? When they had a standoff with the government, Alabama, all those different type of places, they had a standoff with the government. So it's like nothing new underneath the sun. And if you study, like, there, now, now mind you, there's going to be another scenario that's going to happen just like George Floyd. And it's going to cause the nation to go into uproar again. Listen to what I'm telling you. But guess what? When, when, it, when it happens, here's what the Spirit of God is also going to be doing. He's going to be giving a lot of believers an opportunity to pass their tests. Because you know when this George Floyd thing hit, is a lot of people that failed God. They failed God. And you, you look in the natural, you talk about, oh, so, so God going to let somebody die to, to give somebody else a test? No, no, no. Because people will do what they will do. God is going to use it as a means to still test the people that say that they belong to him. So that they can respond correctly to the matter. Not come with this boasting about black. Not come with this boasting about revenge and just. No, no, no. That's not our message. And a lot of people that supposedly are supposed to belong to God, they infect their people with this race message. And God didn't give them their platform to do that. And there's a judgment. If you, with your voice, make people more immature, carnal, racist. Oh, it is dangerous to do. It is the worst decision. Because now you have imparted stuff into people that you were supposed to bring to Jesus, not bring to this whole idea of justice. You bring them to Jesus. You're not here to promote your skin color. And when people start doing that, they pass, they fail the test. And God always revisits situation. There's going to be another situation where a cop going to kill a black person. It's going to be another uproar in the land of America again. And let me just tell you this. The stuff that keeps on occurring. If you are in the spirit and you are following the will of God for your life. You ain't got to worry about nothing. If you fall in the spirit of God, it ain't going to happen to you. But saints, I want to say this and say this again. Don't invest your money in no justice system. You don't have two masters. Don't donate money to no black organization. We not doing that. You hear me? We not rocking with no black organization. We don't think like that. We not no slaves. And we don't get no justice the way that the world seeking out to get justice. That's not our system. And we not black. We blessed. So you not here to defend no cause for nobody but Jesus. Christ and him crucified. You only here to lift up one thing, the cross. You're here to lift up the cross of Jesus Christ. That cross where he died upon, where he shed his blood, where he lived a perfect life. He did not sin. He had no wickedness in him. And he still bore all the sins of man that rebelled against him. And when they spat upon him, and when they laughed at him and put on the purple robe, and put on the crown of thorns, and they mocked him and called him the king of the Jews, he still stood his ground and he died for you. He the only one that died. 
died for you. He's the only death that's worthy of your passion, your, your faithfulness, your dedication, your servanthood. That's the only death that you've been put on the earth to promote. That's the only thing that you've been sent and anointed by God to advocate for is this gospel of Jesus Christ. It's this power of the Holy Ghost. It's this word that brings change and deliverance. This is the only thing that God gave you. This is the only weapon that God put in your hand. He didn't put in your hand the whole history of blacks, the whole history of slavery and injustice. He put in your hands the history of Abraham, the history of Isaac, the history of Jacob. He put the hand of God in your history. Your history is not the history of people that were slaves, that was in bondage, that was taught, up, taught uh, treated unjustly. It is the history of people that would dominate us. They was multimillionaires. They was rich. They was wealthy. They was whole in their body. They was blood -bought. More than conquerors. We're not donating into no black causes. For God we live in. For God we 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 dominate it. You got a different history system. See, stuff come and it take people out of the spirit. Stop watching the news. Turn the news off. So don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about what that system doing. Turn that stuff off. We don't want to hear it. This gospel of Jesus Christ, this is the thing that you're going to preach. You're going to exalt. You're going to lift up this blood of Jesus, this cross of Christ. You're going to lift this up. In your generation, you don't got time to talk about these men, these women that got different causes and different focuses and different assignments. Your assignment is from Jesus. He sent you. Preach this gospel to all the earth. Preach this gospel to the world. We're not preaching about no surrogation. We're not preaching, uh, preaching about no police brutality. That's not your assignment. Your assignment is to preach about Holy Spirit. Your assignment is to preach about how to draw into Christ. And he'll draw. There's no anointing in those situations. There's no solution in those situations. There's no power in those situations. Because the Holy Ghost not in it. The word of the Lord, the Holy Ghost said, I'm not in it. I'm not in that. I'm not in this. I'm not with them. I'm not with them. I am that I am. If I be lifted up, I'll draw them in unto me. He needs somebody to lift him up in the earth. Now stop lifting up your skin color. Stop lifting up how big your head is, how big your foot is. All that stuff don't matter. All that stuff going to pass away. What's only going to live forevermore is the word and the will of God. Only those that do the word of God shall last forever. All that other stuff will die. Oh. What can stop you when you're a blood covenant child of God? What shall separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Is it death? Is it life? Is it the things present or things to come? Is it peril or so? What can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Nothing. I'm not worried about what's going on in their world. I met a police car officer the other day. I was inside. I was inside of a gas station. Police officer. I asked the officer. I said, hey, "Officer, you want to go in front of me?" 
He said, no. He said, actually, you, you, you go right there. He said, I like you. Go ahead. He was a white man. I ain't got no problem. I ain't got no problem. That's not my problem. Well, I'm going to leave my whole focus, my whole mindset because of because something the devil do. The devil ain't got no hold over me. The devil ain't got no power over me. You think I'm gonna teach my daughter, my daughter, my my daughter that? No, no, that's that don't need to be in her system. That don't need to be in her system. That's not her history. Her history is Esther. Her history is Mary. Her history is Mary Magdalene. Her history is Ruth. Her history is Sarah. Money coming to me now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There's a different history. You bless, you're not black. You settle for this flesh to define yourself. This flesh don't profit nothing. So you define yourself by your flesh. That means that you ain't nothing. This flesh don't profit nothing. So if you up there talking about your skin to define who you are, you ain't nothing. The only people that are somebodies in the earth are people that are living in the spirit. They are spirit. Aramando corre ma 